All right, Rao, you want to go ahead and get started? Uh, sure. Let me share the uh, update notes. Let me share my screen. So um, in terms of the network right now, um, both testnet and mainnet are mostly running the 0925.2, um, but we are starting to test 0926 LFS alpha on the mainnet. Um, basically, the way this testing works is that we are creating a couple of additional observer nodes on the mainnet. Uh, one of them will be caught up using the current process to um, the network. And then a new observer node will catch up using only the last finalized state uh, methodology of catching up. So that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we should get started with that either later today or tomorrow. And uh, <clears throat> so 0926, we're calling it alpha at this point in time because if we discover any um, couple of bugs or patches that we need to do, we might add that. So, but 0926 is kind of getting ready for being tested on the mainnet. And then once it works well on the observer nodes on the mainnet, we will update uh, most of the environment or all the environments to um, 0926. So that would be the last finalized state um, piece. Um, there is another um, issue we're working in payroll on, um, which relates to the fact that <clears throat> the mainnet right now is very slow um, for a couple of reasons. We have 20 nodes with uh, sequential proposals around Robin. Um, so that's taking a long time. And then we looked at uh, what the performance issue is and the calculation of the four tip uh, calculations are taking a long time. So uh, we have a couple of pieces in place to address both of those issues. In terms of the round robin thing, which is a temporary thing until we have um, block merge working, we now have an API um, call to determine what is the best next uh, node to deploy to. So this is, uh, at this time, we think that the easiest way is to let the clients handle that that way because it is a temporary thing. Um, and if in future that needs to be or becomes a longer term thing um, where perhaps network characteristics or performance of various nodes or something like that, become criteria for people to deploy to will worry about it as to how to do that at that time. But for now, uh, we don't want to sp spend too much time in um, architecting uh, or deeply architecting something that's a temporary uh, situation. Uh, so that's, um, uh, that's in and available. And the other piece we're doing is the, the four tip calculations. We're parallelizing things as much as we can. Um, and I think we, um, at least the initial estimate is that we've seen about a, uh, um, the, the processing of that going down to one third of where it was before. Uh, but actually what the total numbers and performance looks like on the network um, with that we don't have yet. Uh, but that's another piece. Uh, the, these two are going into the uh, 0926 in addition to the last finalized state. Uh, so that's where we are with the releases, um, and that's kind of the main focus of the work this week. Um, and then uh, we have, um, once 0926 is in, um, we have a lot of things uh, coming up, and they may be, uh, I'm listing them all here as 0927, but it actually may be multiple releases. Um, and as we get clarity on what can be released first and what is next, uh, we will split them down into more releases. So there are some things that require the ability to um, change the POS contract, um, and that would be a hard fork. Um, so that's, um, uh, that kind of, uh, that is one uh, stream of work, if you would. Uh, then there is refactoring the runtime manager, um, and that enables some other changes that we needed to address. Um, 
so, uh, and then the uh, uh, on-chain configuration and uh, short configuration. So these are all um, pieces that need to be done um, as a kind of a preamble to the block merge or in parallel with the block merge. So those are, um, as you can imagine, three or four streams of work that we will be focusing on once we're done with the 0926 um, this week. So that's um, the state of the development, uh, code-based code development. Uh, the migration to IBM Cloud is continuing. We're trying to get the uh, uh, last few servers uh, that are still on Google, the uh, build servers and the monitoring servers and all that moved over to the uh, IBM Cloud. Um, the uh, other thing um, from a continuous integration standpoint is that uh, we have the dependencies updates, the PRs. Um, if you look at the PRs right now, the list of PRs, you'll see a bunch of them that are basically generated by Scala Steward as a um, dependency update type of thing. So we will probably be changing that into a separate repository um, or have Scala Steward scan that repository so that uh, we can work in parallel on the dependencies without cluttering up the main uh, repository. But of course, that dependencies uh, repository will be kept in sync with the main repository on a nightly basis or something like that so that we know that at every point in time, uh, by and large, uh, whatever we do there is directly applicable to the main uh, uh, main repository. So that's, uh, uh, that's uh, part of what is going on. Um, in terms of the governance and all that, um, uh, the discussion uh, and work um, and kind of deeper dive and understanding of the uh, uh, economics of the network to ensure security, survival, and growth and decentralization. Um, that is ongoing, and I think that will um, still, uh, uh, that'll need some work still. The uh, uh, the thing is, you may have a performant network or, or you know, something that works very well compared to others, but until you also have the uh, models around the security and the economics of the network well laid out, um, it would not be attractive to, say, an enterprise customer or serious applications to get on it. Um, so that's kind of what, um, what this effort is all about. Uh, so that's ongoing work. Um, and uh, separately on the R chat effort, um, the, uh, I think Steve Ross Talbot um, is working on the chain to Zulip portion of it. Uh, Dan has already done the Zulip to chain uh, part of it. Uh, and I believe Theo is also kind of looking into or working on some pieces of that. Um, so we'll, we'll look at where things are. If the community can complete that relatively quickly, that's good. If not, probably somebody like Will, who knows how to use uh, the Archain API to get that uh, data over to Zulip, might join the effort to uh, accelerate that. So we're still hoping to finish that relatively uh, quickly, in the, at least this piece, in the next few uh, weeks. So if, it, if there are any community members that are already working with the Archain API and can spend a couple hours perhaps or a day to uh, uh, get this uh, functionality built in, please uh, give out, um, um, uh, you know, please let us know. Um, the code for this is in the RV2020 repository in the uh, Archain community. So that's where it is, uh, RV2020. So that, I think is uh, all my update. Are there any questions or comments on this portion? All right, over to you, Greg. Uh, Daryl, do you want to uh, give the community in review? Sure, okay. So here is the week in review for Thursday, August 20th to Wednesday, August 26th, AKA today. Uh, on Thursday, the governance committee discussed the deadline for board candidates nominations. The team decided to announce the self-nomination deadline for the board positions in multiple forms. 
Um, they discussed what would be entailed in setting up a workers' co-op for our dev. And they discussed the readiness of the various on-chain voting apps for the October meeting. Uh, on Friday in the climate coordination call, we discussed the wildfires in California and Colorado. And then Greg did a layperson overview of the three approaches to game theory and how the Abramsky Highland Ong theories relate to our chain's proof of stake consensus. Um, on Monday, this week's Casper standup covered an application of OSLF, Operational Semantics and Logical Form, to a generalization of geometry. Also, on Monday in the blockchain art call, they simulated quadratic voting and rank voting as potential governance structures and looked into democracy.earth. Uh, on Tuesday is the art chain education call. Uh, during the education session, Thomas Love did a walkthrough of changes for his mode client JS. In addition, the group did a comparison with Scala examples, discuss, discussed OCAPs, function parameters, dependencies in application, Scala function parameters, JavaScript demo and spread operators, partial function application, and dependency injection and tagless final in Scala. I hope you got all that. Uh, also on Tuesday in the communications working group meeting, we discussed the Instagram account, the setting up of DAPI pages, uh, the education process to doing that, um, updating coin market cap, the status of the hackathon in our chat. And uh, please note that Greg is the guest on the Ethereum Silicon Valley virtual meetup on Friday. Um, you can go to meetup.com slash Ethereum Silicon Valley to connect. Uh, so that's on Friday. Um, also as well on Tuesday is the DAP developer working group call and they debugged channel bridging between Discord and Zulip and they worked on a Rolang plugin for Visual Studio Code. And then finally today, this morning, uh, in the members hangout, they discussed product engineering signatures, generative identity, game theory from the CNC call, uh, GPT-3, OpenAI API. And that brings us to right now. Awesome, any questions for Daryl or Rao? Okay. Um, Ian, would you like to demo your um, your DAPI page? Sure. Oops, this is this is your DAPI page, Greg. Uh, let me just put in mine. So I'm browsing to beta network slash Ian. And what these DAPI pages are, uh, they're web pages that are being hosted on the Archain testnet. So here's one that I set up last night. I just put my avatar and uh, a brief little description and how to reach me on, on Discord. And just a little tip for people who are setting up DAPI pages. Um, the easiest way right now is uh, using the template that Raphael set up using uh, showdown markdown language. So if you use like a little free online uh, showdown editor, like I did, you can just put in your text and see it live in, uh, in a view window. And all I really did was I just copy pasted the, uh, the, the text here into DAPI and I, I deployed the page and I assigned myself a, a, a friendly name, this uh, beta network slash Ian as my DAPI page and uh, good to go, it's up and working. Um, where, where I took the images and URL encoded them using something simple like dropping an image in here in Base64 encoding. What, uh, what, what Greg did was he actually hosted his image on the blockchain itself. So when I browse to, uh, to Greg here, sort of take a second to pull up. So this image is actually hosted on chain. I guess it's a, it's a JPEG or a, or a PNG. And can't resist just going a little further. So here, here are all the names that are right now registered on the Archain testnet. So if you were to browse to any of these, I think uh, almost all of these are personal pages. And there are a couple images and things. 
So it's good fun. And uh, I hope more of you jump on and create your own uh, DAPI profile pages. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm about to refresh my page in just one second. I'm waiting for a transaction to complete. Um, because there's a there's a feature on on my new page that I would like to uh, I'd like to point out that I think would would facilitate uh, um, um, more coordination and integration with uh, our uh, on chain governance. Um, let me just uh, grab the screen here. Um, so. Let me just check and see. Okay, it looks like that completed. So let me do a refresh. Okay, there we go. So, um, so here's a, here's a uh, an an updated version of the page. One of the things that's um, that's useful about this page is I have QR encoded my governance rev address. Um, and so if we were, if we were as a community um, to put up these DAPI pages, um, then we would have photo um, verification associated with the QR, um, uh, with the QR encoding of the rev address. Um, so that way we can, we can have an additional verification check um, about these rev addresses. Uh, so for for all kinds of coordination, whether it's uh, sending um, sending uh, uh, voting tokens or sending rev, um, and in fact, you could you can put up you know multiple different rev addresses, right? So you could have a rev address for voting, a rev address for tipping, and so on and so forth. Um, and that would then be associated with uh, your image um, and um, other you know identifying features. Um, on a resource on the chain that only you control. Now, of course, it, it's it's far from secure. Someone could just grab an image of you off the uh, off the internet and do the same. So it's it's easily spoofed, but it's a a step in the right direction. Uh, so I would really uh, for for that reason and many many other reasons, I would really like to encourage folks to go ahead and. Um, and put up a DAPI page uh, um, with, uh, you know, some facts about yourself um, and uh, your QR, uh, a QR encoding of your, uh, of your governance rev address. Does that make sense? People understand what I'm, what I'm driving at? Yes. Cool. And it's, you know, this is all done with uh, off the shelf tools. So for example, um, let's see. I just use this QR code generator and I checked it against another one. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know where the tab is anymore, just to make sure that they generated the same QR code. I wasn't being spoofed in that way. You can also, you, you can also go around the, the loop and check that the, you can feed the QR code that's generated into a decoder and make sure that you get back to the, um, the, the address. Um, and likewise, uh, you know, as Ian pointed out, there's tons and tons of base 64 uh, encoders if you want to go that route, or you can upload your uh, your assets to the chain um, and um, refer to them um, using the DAPI protocol um, uh, link or URL uh, 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 mechanism uh, to refer to them. So we do have uh, content, uh, you know, uh, addressable storage um, on chain. Um, right now that's available today uh, and you can you know I mean it's it's not like you know the super fancy slick stuff um, that we see on the web this is more like you know a generation or two ago um, but we're we're getting there one one step at a time um, so I, I think this is a, a one way to both create community coherence and also uh, to demonstrate to people who might be uh, looking on at our chain as uh, as to what's going on, I think this is a, a very very good demonstration of of um, uh, how we're approaching things. Any questions about uh, about what I'm suggesting? All 
Okay. Um, I don't think I've got any more. Uh, we should expect a vigorous conversation um, in the um, Friday closed door sessions. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, what we might talk about here in public, I don't think I've got any more. Any questions, comments, uh, um, uh, topics of interest from the community? Greg, I just added the link to the Meetup event on Friday here in the chat. Okay. And there are already, I believe, 36 people who sign up for the Meetup. Oh, that's awesome. That's really good. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask you, Greg, you were talking about um, a governance rev address. Um, uh, does, do, do people have a governance rev address? And if not, is there a, um, a simple way you could explain how someone would, would do that? So the co-op required that people send in a rev address in order to um, vote in the next AGM. That's ah, the, okay. So that's, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, the governance rev address. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. okay. Got it. Yeah. So whatever rev address you, you sent in to the co-op, um, make a DAPI page, put your picture on it, put that a QR code of that, um, and any other uh, identifying information. Uh, and you know we're starting to get to, you know the the makings of uh, identifying markers for members of the co-op. On-chain identity. Greg, one question. The QR code, was it generated on, on the same DAPI page or how did you get it? Right, so there are, if you just type in QR code generator into your browser. Oh, oh got it, got it. You okay. will find a bazillion of them. Here's one that I used, mm -hmm. right? I just pasted in my rev address. It generated the code and allowed me to save it as a PNG file and then I, uh, Base64 encoded the PNG file uh, and used that as the data in the DAPI page. Got it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, it's not slick, <laughs> but it's relatively painless, right? I mean, there's, you know, I used entirely off-the-shelf tools to do this uh, and, and did so in a matter of seconds, right? So there was not not very complicated uh, just stringing together a couple of tools and already we've got the makings of um, a notion of identity now again it's not it's not the most robust notion of identity but it's 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 a beginning it's suggestive it starts to help people see what might be the case with Archie and that photo and the QR code they're actually being stored on chain right they're stored they're stored on chain right yeah so 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 people can and 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 nobody else can muck with that resource right i'm the only one with the keys to that resource now that doesn't prevent someone else from coming along and putting up a photo of me and a different rev address right so you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to have some other way of distinguishing two that claim to be the real one right um, but, uh, um, you know, uh, that's, that's easily defeated with some, you know, two factor authentication, right? I put my address and, you know, so someone can then email me with the QR code and say, is this you? Right. And as, uh, if someone goes to the wrong page, but they send the email address and it's easy to vary other means that, you know, what my email address is either in the co-op or or um, otherwise. And so if someone puts up a fake email address, they will verify it, but the fake email address will be easily checked as not, not the email address that's you know, associated with blah, blah. Um, so, so again, you know, it's still not, it's not uh, super brilliant, you know, it's not foolproof, but slowly but surely, we can begin to approximate higher and higher degrees of quality of ID. So well, I, we do have one other thing, Ian. We, how many total um, uh, 
uh, um, submissions mm -hmm. for board positions that we get? We don't have to say who they yeah. are, but we. Right. So there are uh, there are six members who have self nominated themselves. Uh, that are interested in becoming directors and contending for the um, for direct for director positions in the annual meeting on October 24th. So the nominating committee is going to go through and vet those uh, those six nominees and hand that off to the board, and then the board will uh, create a ballot of uh, potential directors for people to vote on. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Looking forward. This is going to be a very interesting election year. I hope that everyone is, uh, is prepared to participate. Okay. Um, anything else people are about? Um, uh, we can uh, yield back the time to the community. All right. Thanks to all. Ciao, ciao. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.